since I'm finally able to use my R1, after modding it a bit too much and ruining the old battery, I've finally been able to put in a lot of hours with this thing. And today I'll show you why this is the absolute best budget mouse yet. Before we do that though, I wanted to mention that only about 20% of you guys actually subscribe to the channel. So if you're at all enjoying this type of content, definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell right next to it. And as a quick disclaimer, I purchased this mouse with my own money, so my opinion will always be my own. Getting into the boring stuff, as you can see, I don't even have the original packaging anymore because it's that bad. It's just insanely minimal, very thin cardboard, that's really it. Nothing else in there. Just like you would get with a Viper Mini back then. In terms of the weight, it completely depends on which version that you get. In general, there will always be two different versions, one with a bigger battery and one with a smaller battery. And we will do a deep dive into those different versions later in this video so you don't get too confused. In general, the weight difference is insanely minimal, so if you appreciate a long battery life, definitely go for the bigger battery versions. And if you really care about those few grams, go for the smaller battery. In terms of the overall QC, this might mouse is insanely well engineered. In fact, it is so well engineered that I could cut up the entire base and it's still insanely rigid. Of course, there's a minimal side flex because the outer shell is very thin in order to get down to such a low weight at this budget. But as you can see, because it's so well engineered and the side structures actually rest on the size of the PCB in order to make it this much more rigid in terms of side flex, it's very difficult to mess this thing up. I have the R1 Pro here and in theory, it should be around 48. 8 grams, but I actually swapped the 250 milliamp hour stock battery into a 150 milliamp hour one. So you do save a few grams here together with this insane base cut that I did. So my unit with full pad skates is actually around 43 grams instead of those 48. I probably wouldn't recommend putting in this much effort to save around 4 to 5 grams, but if you want to, you could. In terms of overall QC, I can't really find an issue with this mouse. It's kind of insane. There is some post travel on the side buttons that is noticeable when just testing it like this but like in game there's nothing wrong with it at all i have zero grinding on my mouse buttons which is insanely impressive at this price point compared to my vaxi mice that are over 140 dollars and i can feel the switch just grind in the plastic and overall it just feels really solid in terms of the overall shape this should look very familiar to you by now and if not maybe it will now this is basically just an x2 clone comparing this mouse to the pulsar x2 it's like comparing a hardy s plus to a felina s450 these are both absolute twins and it's very difficult to tell them apart from each other. There are some insanely minimal differences in terms of the comfort grooves, which are a tiny bit more pronounced on the Pulsar X2. I do think that the hump on the Pulsar X2 is a bit more awkward or a tiny bit bigger. And I do think that the R1 is a tiny bit less restrictive. But then again, it's like comparing these two mice to each other, which are just a copy of each other. But then again, it's like comparing a S450 to a Hardy S Plus, which is simply a clone. So the differences are going to be insanely minimal. If you don't know what a Pulsar X2 actually feels like in hand, these days it would be considered a medium-sized mouse. It is definitely more of a claw poker shape with that hump towards the rear. So if you have 19 by 10 hands like me, it will be very comfortable for both a relaxed claw grip or also an aggressive claw grip. For hands bigger than 20 by 10, I probably wouldn't recommend this for a relaxed claw grip. But overall, it's just this very safe and kind of boring shape in terms of claw grips, mainly because the mouse does kind of look like a rectangle. It doesn't have these aggressive curves and it's pretty flat overall. So if you're not a fan of flat sides, this is definitely not for you. But I would, however, consider it being an insanely safe shape for almost every kind of claw grip and also fingertip grip because the sides are that flat. So if you just want this very blank canvas to put your grip upon, you definitely can't go wrong with this thing. Compared to the Pulsar X2 Mini, the X2 Mini does feel way smaller. As you can see, the X2 Mini is much shorter, also narrower, and it overall just kind of looks tiny next to the normal R1. So it would be insanely awesome if VXE could actually make a mini version, so those fingertip grip lovers of the X2 Mini, especially it being the much more popular variant of the two shapes, constantly being sold out in all colorways, at least back when they did limited editions and stuff like that, it was always the much more popular option. I could definitely see it being insanely profitable for VXE doing a mini version. But yeah, in comparison to the X2V2 even, I would never get the X2V2. The R1 Pro is not only lighter than the X2V2, 
but also does it actually support 4K. It also has an amazing coating on this Pro and the Pro Max version, which is also very rubbery. The click feel is overall fucking awesome, and the QC, in my personal opinion, is even better. And when I say QC, I mean the mouse engineering itself as well, taking into the consideration. Poster mice are engineered very weirdly. They have these rubber pads for post travel, which many have issues with because they give you kind of a spongy and also sticky click feel. And also the ratio optical set they use, I just absolutely hate. Mainly compared to something like the new Omron optical set they use in the Beast X Medium, for example, and also the Sara V2 and the Sprime PM1. These just feel awful, and I definitely prefer a mechanical switch feel over these ratio clicks. But yeah, getting a bit deeper into the coding, this coding is really rubberized on the Pro and the Pro Max version. I could sort of see it being an issue for people who sweat a shit ton. So if you don't want this very rubbery coating that just grips as soon as your hands get a tiny bit warm, you can get the normal R1 SE or the R1 version, which actually don't have a coating in order to save costs and also make the mouse much more affordable for you. And we will get into those versions very soon. Overall, one of the best coatings I've ever felt, and I can't believe I only paid about 38 bucks for this. In terms of these skates, the skates that I have on here are actually core pads made for the Pulsar X2. And before you ask me in the comments, no, Pulsar X2 skates will not fit on this mouse. I tried. You will have to sand your base on the mouse if you want to fit them, just like I did. But the stock skates that come with this thing are actually dyed. They're not 100% PTFE, so take that as you want. They're not bad, they're just dyed. So I will always prefer core pads over them personally. But in terms of stock skates, they're definitely not bad. They're fine. And especially at this price point, they're more than usable. And you definitely can't say that about the stock skates on the Felina S450. In terms of the clicks, many of these versions come with different switches. As you can see, this R1 Pro version actually comes with Huano, Pink Shell, Pink Dots, and they're actually freaking awesome. The overall click feel is very crisp, not too soft, not too hard. They're definitely still spammable, but they're not the lightest switches in the entire world. But overall, they kind of feel like an improved version of the Blue Shell Pink Dots. But of course, that heavily varies depending on the implementation of the switch and how the clicks are actually structured. Overall, click experience is freaking awesome. I would definitely describe it as premium. There is a bit of post travel at the front of the mouse if you click in here, but it's nowhere as horrible as on a Lamsu Maya, for example. Overall, it hasn't annoyed me in-game personally, but I could see it being an issue for some people. As I already said, the side buttons do have a bit of post travel, but then again, in-game, it has never annoyed me personally. The side buttons are definitely a bit on the heavier side, but they feel great to use in my my personal opinion. The scroll has these defined steps, it's not too hard, and it also doesn't feel cheap whatsoever. Mouse free is actually really good, it is definitely not too heavy, and it's also not too light, so it's a fucking perfect implementation in my opinion. And yeah, it just keeps on getting better with this thing. Where it doesn't really get better though is when you actually have to decide for which version to go for, because this is the translation. There's the R1SE and the R1SE Plus. The Plus just has a bigger battery, and accordingly it also weighs more at around 55 grams compared to my 43 gram version that I modded, mainly due to the 520 milliamp hour battery. But all you need to know is that this 3395 SE sensor is not a 3395, it's a rebranded 3335 sensor. Definitely not the highest end of sensors, but also something that you will not be able to feel a difference with in-game at 1k polling rate. Don't let the stats of this mouse fool you and make you think that you won't be an esports pro gamer if you don't get the latest 3395 sensor. All of the versions from the R1SE up to the R1 will actually support 2k with the 2k receiver, but I can already tell you that this will be some hell of a Mickey Mouse 2k on the sensor. I personally would not buy it only because it's able to support up to 2k with a separate dongle. I would only get this if you are on a budget and if you just want a 1k mouse that is super solid. And as you can see, the switches are also different for most of these versions. I have no fucking clue what a Ring Neo switch is and these translations are absolutely fucked, <laughs> but I can tell you that the R1 and the R1 Pro come with Huano pink shell pink dots and that the R1 Pro Max actually comes with these new white kale switches. Also, as you can see, the R1, R1 SE and the R1 SE Plus will all all not have a coating. This will just be pure plastic. Whilst the R1 Pro and the R1 Pro Max have this very smooth and rubbery coating that just grips your hand. That, in my personal opinion, is the biggest difference between these two mice that you will be able to feel. Whilst you can't feel the sensor difference on 1K, 
you will definitely be able to feel a difference between these two versions. But yeah, going from cheapest to most expensive, the R1 SE comes in at around $22 currently. I have definitely seen this below $20 before, and it simply depends on what this AliExpress store is feeling like. Then there's the R1 SE Plus, or the 500 milliamp hour version, which is the same, just with a bigger battery, coming in at around $2 to $3 more. Then there's the normal R1 version, which actually does have the 3395 sensor, but not the coating. And at below $30 with a 3395 sensor, this thing is unheard of. Then there's also the normal Pro version, which I have here, which has the coating, the awesome sensor, the Huano pink shell pink dots, all of that good stuff at around $42. And there's also the Pro Max at $45.5 currently, which has the 500 milliamp hour battery. And I definitely would recommend getting the bigger battery for 4K if that's something you're planning on using in the future. But if you're planning on getting 4K right now, I would not buy the dongle separately. I would actually get it together with this kit here because you do save a few bucks. So you can get the Pro Max with the 4K dongle for around $52 right now. And you can get it in hella different colors, but it will cost you a tiny bit more, as you can see. I still think that the mouse is absolutely worth it at $60 compared to the rest of the market right now. But $60 compared to $42 is quite an up price just to be able to run it at 4K and get some color on it. But that's completely up to you. What I personally would do would buy this fucking awesome purple version and mod the shit out of this one and get it down to 43 grams as well and just run 1K. But yeah, as you can see, these are all the different color versions. Orange, yellow, pink, Pink, purple, and that's about it. And also the dongle normally costs $15 by itself, which is quite a bit for a Chinese company. I also can't tell you anything about the 4K performance itself since I don't have the dongle and I don't personally care. So for the software itself, you simply use VHub. VHub is the software that VXE or VGN use for all of their products. And when you first download it, your software will probably be in Chinese. So if you want to actually set it to English, you will have to go up here, setting, and then language, go to the drop down menu, and set it to English. I will also make sure to link the software down in the description below. But yeah, when you want to pair your 4K dongle or whatever, you have the option to do so here. And for the mouse software itself, what you can do is remap your binds, change your DPI, change your performance settings. I would personally recommend setting a debounce time of two milliseconds since I haven't had any issues with that. And then turning on the performance mode. Motion sync is personal preference. If you don't feel a difference, simply ignore this setting. And then here you will be able to go up to either 2K or 4K depending on the receiver that you got. You can also change your liftoff distance and of course update your mouse if there's an update available. And that's about it. So in terms of the mods that I have done, what I did was simply a base cut. I definitely wouldn't recommend this for the average user because you definitely kind of need to know what you're cutting off and so you don't accidentally cut something off that you will need. But something a bit easier would definitely be soldering in a different battery. You could also do twisted wires for putting in a new battery, but I personally don't recommend doing that. But yeah, with my 150 milliamp hour battery I saved around two to three grams instead of the normal 250 milliamp hour one that was in here before and my battery easily lasts two whole days on 1k but if you want to run 4k I definitely wouldn't recommend soldering in a different battery especially not if you're going for the 250 milliamp hour version if you want 4k I would definitely go for the 500 milliamp hour version of this mouse just because else you will have to plug in your mouse at least every second day or something similar to that overall with my mods I saved around five grams which is not a lot. But going from 48 down to 43 is noticeable, but it's probably not worth spending several hours to mod this thing just to get it down five grams less. But definitely comment down below if you're interested in seeing how I do these base cuts, because there are not really that many good sources out there besides Bearded Bob. So when it comes to my personal opinion about this mouse, I think that this blows any other budget mouse out the water right now. In terms of the overall quality that you get, the availability, the low price that you have to pay for some of these versions, and also the fact that you get to choose what version that you want, depending on your needs and how schizo you are about high polling rates. And I would personally get this over the S450 any day of the week. This mouse in the stock condition, no matter which version that you get, is as good as it currently gets. And considering your price tags, it is virtually perfect, especially when compared to something like the Felina S450, that you will definitely need to do some mods on in order to make it even nearly as good. Of course, the S450 is super solid out the box, but the stock skates are unusable. Some parts of the mouse definitely feel cheaper than on this VXE. And this mouse is just really, really premium for its price tag. I personally definitely enjoy the VXE experience out of the box way more over the Felina S450, but of course, 
this shape will always hold a special place in my heart. In terms of all of the budget mice that are out there right now, so far, this is by far my favorite one. I was able to buy this pro version at around $34 to $35 on the same AliExpress store that I'm recommending you buying it from. And for a price like that, getting an insane coating like this especially is what really surprises me that you are now able to just buy. And as I already said, the engineering on this thing is really good. They really know what they're doing. But yeah, to the conclusion, who is this mouse for? If you are at all interested in this Polestar X2 type of shape and you want to feel what a really good mouse would feel like with that shape and you don't need to worry about wonky QC or sticky clicks or if you also just want a slightly lighter weight and want to experience 4K and all of that stuff for a cheaper and more affordable price, definitely go for this thing. If you're simply looking for a budget mouse and you don't know what to get and you also aren't sure what shape would be the best one for your grip, just get this thing because it is a very blank canvas that you can easily paint your grip upon. It is sort of the GPX for claw grip mice. It's just this potato that everybody can find a grip with. And especially because of their more flat sides, it is also super suitable for fingertip grip. But since I also have to tell you who this mouse is not for, I probably wouldn't recommend it for somebody with 40 by 30 centimeter hands. And I probably also wouldn't recommend it to somebody who wants this type of curvy sidewall. Other than that, this will from now on be my number one recommendation to anybody looking for a new mouse because I hate seeing people wasting their money. And for those people who are always telling me that they would rather recommend a used good product like a Razer and a Logitech mouse or whatever instead of having to buy several cheap Chinese mice. This is a true statement to them. You cannot tell me that this thing feels worse than a used Logitech or Razer mouse. You just simply can't. Despite the many upgrades I've done to my GPX2 and also this lightweight mod and all this type of stuff to make it like a real endgame GPX, I still prefer using this thing. Mainly, of course, because the GPX is still a potato and that this is much more viable for most types of claw grips, but also because I don't have to feel guilty when using this mouse. I didn't pay $130 to $150 on it, and I'm just able to enter that fucking flow state and just play my best in any type of game. Whilst when I play with the GPX2, there will always be these moments of feeling like I'm holding a potato in my hand. Also, I haven't done any testing on the 4K, but the 4K results on a GPX2 so far are not looking good. And who would have thought that this teeny tiny dongle would not be good for 4K? Other than that, that's enough yapping from my side. I don't have any affiliate codes or anything like that for this mouse. I simply recommend it a lot because it's actually genuinely worth its money and a super safe recommendation. I also hate myself for not making this video two months ago when I actually got this mouse because I've had this for ages but couldn't use it because I fucked up my old battery. I also really hope that I can reach the target audience here in Europe and also other Eastern countries that simply aren't able to buy something like an Endgame Gear OP1 Wii or a Vaxi mouse or another mouse that costs over 80 or 90 or over a hundred dollars. There are so many countries out there. I would even say the majority of the gaming consumers simply can't afford a GPX or something like that. So I really hope that I can reach that target audience of this mouse a bit better because there's so many people out there with shitty gaming gear because they simply can't afford anything else. And now they no longer have to live with shitty gaming gear because they can get this thing off AliExpress and they are actually able to afford this thing. But yeah, now I'm actually gonna end the video. Thank you guys for watching. Definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the bell right next to the subscribe button if you're at all interested in this peripheral enthusiast content. But other than that, I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.